Hi, I'm Fred Williamson. I'm a full-time bowl turner and I've been uh, working with Monticello since about 1996 and with the Tulip Poplars since 2008. In about 1978 I discovered greenwood turning which is where you work from the log. Instead of uh, using dried lumber you take the tree right off the ground um, and uh, it just frees you up to all kinds of shapes and colors and woods. The first step is actually going out in my van, my, my uh, extended cab van, and cutting the pieces and rolling them up a ramp into my uh, van and bringing them home. This is something that you don't see in the finished product, but the pieces of wood are often 200 to 600 pounds heavy. They're loaded in the van. It's quite heavy dumped out on the ground. I store them up in the in the shade along my driveway so that the wood stays as damp as possible without rotting. The wood will stay under the shade and out of the sun and uh, dry slowly and uh, as the wood dries though uh, is lying on the ground it, it picks up some of the um, microorganisms in the soil and I get colors. Spalting is when the fungi work on the wood and colors also come from molds and uh, this coloration adds a lot of richness to the wood. So I don't turn everything really fresh, like the day after the tree's cut down. Usually it's two or three months, and it may be as long as two or three years before I finally turn a bowl out of a log. The next step is to uh, chainsaw a section that is manageable to come in and hand truck, be hauled into my lathe room, and I will then uh, fine tune it with electric chainsaw into a oct roughly octagonal shape screwed onto a faceplate. At this point I'm making the first choices of what kind of bowl it'll be. What will be the top of the bowl? What will be the bottom? What kind of a irregular surface am I looking for? Or, or plain round surface? Will it be a globe or open shape? All those decisions are made at this point. Uh, but then the element of uh, surprise and discovery happens because I, I mount it on the lathe, begin to uh, cut it with the gouge as the lathe spins it around, the gouge comes across the tool rest, and reveals what's in the wood. I turn the outside of the bowl first and get the shape I want. Then the next step is to hollow the bowl out, removing all that excess wood on the inside until I have a, a thin wall which is uh, a little over an eighth, a little bit under 3 sixteenths inch thick. This then dries for a day or two and then the next process takes longer than the turning that's sanding and sanding is the key getting it down to about 500 grit. Um, then I take it off the faceplate and uh, put the first coat of finish on and that's when you get the payback. Uh, everything jumps out of the, of the wood. You can see just what's in that wood when the finish hits it and the color comes out. There's a real sense, I, to me, and I think a lot of people get the same thing, a real sense of a connection with the tree in a light and elegant shape that can be transported and which will last forever. Once the wood is dried, it's not going to rot. It is stabilized, uh, so you have a, a, a real a memorial of that tree in your hands when you hold it. My philosophy is to try with each piece to create a bowl that has presence. And, uh, and what I'm doing is creating a thin, polished, curved section of the wood, which uh, if you pay attention, you can read the history of the tree in. With the second tulip poplar that I'm working with now, um, the outside under the bark, the sapwood, has faulted in wonderful uh, forms. You can see the colors on the wall back here, the black and all the colorations. A standard poplar is just plain white around the edge and instead you have this just uh, dynamic uh, patterns and colors that are just, you get a sense of the age of the tree that way. One of the more uh, interesting things about working with this wood is having to work around all the bolts and uh, spikes and a lightning rod arrestor parts that were embedded in this tree. Uh, that These trees were both uh, nursed along for so many uh, decades to try to keep them going and it's, it's meant hazards for the chainsaw but also uh, dynamic events because where the metal was it's discolored the wood and you get these black streaks that are, are very special and beautiful. So that's one thing that um, uh, has been uh, quite different from any other wood I've turned. All the metal that's been in this in these trees, including a few that had bullets in them, and I was unable to preserve that bullet. But it was a lead bullet, and you know somebody took a pot shot at that thing a hundred years ago, and there was the evidence. They're scattered around. There are little bits of this Monticello all around 
the nation and, and across the globe. It's also a neat feeling just thinking these little, little bits of Monticello are being uh, treasured and preserved uh, all over the place.